Hello, everyone. I'm Yulen from Tsinghua University. I'm glad to be here to present our work, Ocrum, a secure and efficient multitasking device for SGX. Our story begins with the paradigm of confidential computing. The concept is that the user deploy applications on untrusted infrastructure, like public clouds, and demands protecting the privacy of their applications. One way to realize confidential computing is through into SGX. SGX enables the user to create private regions of memory named enclaves. The enclaves are guaranteed by the CPU to have strong isolation from outside enclave and have memory encrypted. Two, enclaves are protected from software and hardware attacks from infrastructure. However, SGX is known to be hard to program due to SGX's hardware limitations. So, to ease the SGX development, library operating systems are introduced by prior work, with LibOS providing system calls to user applications inside enclaves. It is now possible to run legacy applications with few or even no modifications. This legacy application includes those that use multi-processes. Multitasking is undoubtedly an important feature for SGX libOSs. Existing libOSs have used two different approaches. The first one is the single enclave approach, which runs all libOSs process inside a single SGX enclave. The problem with this approach is the lack of process isolation. This seems unavoidable as there are no hardware means on x86 CPU to secure partitions on enclave into smaller security domain. The second is the multi-enclave approach, which where each libOS process resides in a dedicated enclave and is served by a dedicated libOS instance. This LibOS instance in different enclaves communicate with each other through a secure communication channel. The problem with this approach is threefold. The first, the LibOS process creation is very slow as creating a LibOS process involves creating a new enclave. The second, the IPC between LibOS processes is expensive as the data transfer involves encryption and decryption. Third, it is painful for the LibOS to synchronize all LibOS instances in different enclaves. Think about the file system. This essentially turns the problem of implementing a local file system into a distributed one. Here we have seen the two approaches. Neither of them is satisfying. The single enclave approach is insecure due to the lack of process isolation, while the multi enclave approach is very poor in performance. So the question is, can we achieve both security and performance? We present Ocrum, a system that aims to achieve both security and performance for multitasking in SGX enclaves. The architecture, as shown below, has two characterizations. The first is that all LibOS processes reside in the same enclaves, which is similar to heaven. But the second one is that it is incorporated with an in-enclave isolation mechanism. This brings advantage in terms of both performance and security. Thanks to the single enclave architecture, LibOS processes are faster to create and they can communicate with each other by sharing memory inside the enclave. No encryption or decryption are needed. And since all LibOS processes share a single LibOS instance, it's easy to implement an efficient encrypted file system. For security-wise, with the in-enclave isolation mechanism, we can now enforce two kinds of isolation. Inter-process isolation and the process libOS isolation. This is certainly good for security. Now you may be wondering, the idea of in-enclave isolation sounds cool, but how? After all, you have said there is no hardware support for this. 
Our secret sauce is a compiler technique named software fault isolation. Here is the workflow of Ochrome, which integrates SFI into the libOS. Specifically, the Ochrome tool chain implements SFI and generates instrumented ELFs, and then the Ochrome verifier double check the security of the ELFs. And lastly, the libOS loads the verified ELFs into the Enclave and runs them as libOS processes. Since these libOS processes are isolated by SFI, we named them Software Isolated Processes. Here is our talk outline. We will firstly introduce our design, which includes our tool chain, verifier, and libOS. Then we will report our implementations and the evaluations results. Firstly, let me introduce what is SFI. SFI is a software instrumentation technique that sandbox untrusted modules, which we call domains, for the rest of the system. This is not a new thing, but we found existing efficient SFI has limitations on domain address size and number. For example, new tube client requests 100 GB for each domain, and the piece field only supports four domains at 36 bit address space. As a consequence, both of them can't support multi domains on SGX, which only have 64 GB 36 address space. So we decided to leverage a new hardware. Intel MPX to develop a new SFI. Intel MPX is a feature on Intel CPU. It provides a boundary register, which can represent an address range. The MPX provides four boundary registers in total, and it also provides two instructions, bound checker lower bound and bound checker upper bound, to check if an address is in the range. If it is, then nothing happened. Otherwise, the hardware fault occurs. Based on MPX, we develop a new SFI scheme named MPX based multi domain SFI. Briefly, we call it MMD SFI. A domain of MMD SFI includes a code region and a data region, which is surrounded with two guard regions. Our MMD SFI supports unlimited domains. Besides, MMD SFI defines two policies. First, memory access should only be within the data region. Second, all control flow can only jump inside the code region. How can we achieve these two policies? Firstly, we constrain memory access with memory guards. There is a memory access as the arrow shows. Before every memory access, we insert a memory guard before it. A memory guard takes an address at the input. It will check if this address is within the range of bound zero. So we assign bound zero as the accessible ranges of this domain. How we implement memory guards? This is it's just two bound check instructions as we described before. Some guards are redundant in our systems. We will remove them with the range analysis. How about control transfer? Let's take a close look inside the code region. We assume there are two functions in the code region, and one line of code in function 1 wants to jump to function 2. How can we assume this function won't call out of code region? Firstly, we use a CFI label marks or valid transfer target. Note that a domain's CFI label is unical in the whole system. Then we insert a CFI guard before the control transfer. This CFI guard will take an address as input and to see if there is a CFI label at that address. How do we implement CFI guards? Firstly, we read the memory at the target. Then we compare it with bound 2. Bound 2 has a small ranges, only has one number, its CFI label. So this two bound check equals to a compare instruction. Then we will introduce the verifier, what's it, and why we need one. 
Firstly, the verifier is a tool that checks if boundary follows the policy of MMDS5, as we mentioned before. The first reason we introduce a verifier is because the tool chain is large, complex, and buggy. An independent verifier can remove the tool chain from the verifier's trust code base. The second reason is an independent verifier allows the user to run boundaries from untrusted source. Some users don't want to rebuild the boundaries themselves, and some service providers don't want to distribute source code. So they can use pre-built boundaries rather than local build. How our verifier works? It consists of four steps. The boundary is disassembled with completely disassembly. Then the verifier validates the instruction set, verifier control transfer and the memory accesses. For details, algorithm, and its proof about these four steps, please check our paper. Finally, let's take a look of our libOS. All the user processes are recited in one enclave. The libOS is the bridge between the process and the untrusted host OS. The process creation and IPC will be done inside the enclave, but some I.O. like network request will be delegated to the host OS. Ochrome implement an encrypted safe file system inside the libOS. File data will be protected in the enclave and the only encrypted data will be write out to the host OS. The attack cannot steal secrets from Ochrome or Ochrome's file system directly. This is all about our design. Now it's our implementation and the evaluations. Let's take a quick look about implementations. Our tool chain is based on LVM9 and includes 3000 lines of C++ code. Our verifier is written by 2000 lines of Python code with Zedis and Pywax. The libOS is written with 15,000 lines of Rust code and it's a memory safe libOS. About the evaluation, firstly, let's take a look about how much we paid for MMDS5. We test our MMDS5 on spec 2006 and has about 34% performance overhead. The results shows our optimization reduced 20% of overhead. We also test Ochrome with three workload process intensity, CPU intensity, and IO intensity applications. For the process intensity applications, we choose the fish, which is a user friendly share. Our input data comes from Unix benchmark, which includes a set of Linux commands. Our results show we get more than 500 times faster than Graphene SGX. For CPU intensive application, we choose GCC, the default compiler collection on GNU Linux distribution. The input data is a set of single C file. The sizes of the files are 5 lines of code, 5,000 lines of code, and 50,000 lines of code. The results show Ochrome is 42 times faster than Graphene on the first file and it's 14 times faster on the second file, and it's 3.8 times faster on the last file than Graphene SGX. The last application benchmark is an I.O. intensive application, a web server like HTTPD. We use 10 kilobytes the size of request as its workloads. The results shows Ochrome has a negligible difference to Graphene SGX. We present Ochrome, a new SGX libOS that aims for both secure and efficient multitasking. Then we propose an SFI, isolated processes. It's a new approach to SGX multitasking. Then we designed the MPX-based multi-domain SFI, a flexible SFI scheme for SGX libOSs. We demonstrate the effectiveness of Ochrome with benchmark results. Ochrome has gone beyond a research project. We want to make an open source uh, SGX libOS that is useful to the community. On the right is a Hello World demo of Ochrome. 
As shown in the demo, running a Hello World program in SGX Enclave is simplified by Ocrum to just three commands. Thank you everyone, that's all of my presentations.